So video on the iPhone, just like photos, are going to change how people use their cell phones. And I think very quickly you're going to see the iPhone 3GS, just like the iPhone 3G was with pictures, becoming the most popular camera or video camera being used on a cell phone on all the sites where people share video. In 2009, Apple unveiled the iPhone 3GS. It was the first smartphone with the ability to shoot high definition video. Up until that point, cell phone videos looked like this. Little did we know that with this release, Apple had laid the foundation for a new revolution in the world of independent cinema. But before I go any further, I need to back up for a second and talk about cameras and the last camera revolution. Until about 10 years ago, if you wanted to be a filmmaker or a director, you needed access to these, cinema cameras. And you needed access to film, and someone to develop it for you. The cameras and all of the equipment necessary to fully utilize them would cost you quite a lot of money. And this really did limit who had the ability to make movies and who didn't. So if you wanted to make movies, film school was kind of your only option. You'd have access to the equipment and hopefully be able to leverage your way into the industry afterwards. Either that, or you found a way to borrow thousands of dollars and just hope your creation would work out. Helps if you have talent. Then in 2008, the game changed. Canon debuted the 5D Mark II, a photography camera with the ability to shoot high definition video. Nikon unveiled the D90 and Panasonic the GH1 quickly followed. These releases kicked off what became known as the DSLR revolution. Independent filmmakers quickly realized that DSLR video was cheaper, could handle lower light environments, and the detachable lenses gave it the ability to create more cinematic looks. And in terms of cost, it really was more affordable. I mean, if we're comparing a $3,000 price tag to a $30,000 one. And for a time, the filmmaking world was happy, and a wealth of independent films were seen produced on these DSLR cameras. Noah Baumbach's Francis Ha, we need to talk about Kevin, the Polish brothers with For Lovers Only, and Lena Dunham's Tiny Furniture. It was the energy boost that independent filmmaking needed at the time, and it created a lot more access to people who still couldn't afford those fancy cinema cameras. So where does the iPhone fit into all of this? Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have $3,000 lying around to buy a 5D Mark II. But what I do have is this, an iPhone. And the game changed yet again in 2015 when this happened. Tangerine was one of the first movies to be shot entirely on iPhone and the first to find critical success. But the reason for using an iPhone in production really had very little to do with being edgy or artistic. It ultimately came down to cost and accessibility. Shooting on the iPhone was something that we eventually got to because when we started budgeting the film and looking at how we were going to make this on the limited budget that we had, that option eventually arose. So I, uh, I'd say the idea of Tangerine came long before. Since the original debut of its video capabilities, the iPhone has only gotten more impressive. Sean Baker shot Tangerine on three iPhone 5Ss, and now we're heading towards the iPhone 10. Other smartphones have joined the fray, and I won't get into a debate here over which is superior, but yeah, I've seen some impressive things. With Sean Baker trying to save on costs on a low-budget independent feature, it made sense to use an iPhone. But with industry veterans and their big budgets behind them, why would a director like Steven Soderbergh, whose latest movie Unsane is shot entirely on iPhone, opt to use this technology? To answer that question, I thought I'd dive a little deeper into my own iPhone filmmaking experience. I've been a movie buff since as long as I could remember, and after dabbling in film theory online for a couple of years, I found myself thinking, how can I get in on this? A quick Google search yielded a $3,000 wall in order to purchase a DSLR capable of producing what I thought would be a decent video. Yes, I knew about Tangerine, but I hadn't really explored any behind the scenes notes on how the iPhone was utilized, so it still felt like magic to me. Then among the Oscar buzz of 2017, I came across this video from the production of La La Land. There's director Damien Chazelle rehearsing the big opening scene with an iPhone? Surely that had to be a mistake. 
Combine the impressive cinematography of Tangerine with the fact that Chazelle was able to use his iPhone footage as a low-risk way to demonstrate the feasibility of a fully fleshed out cinematic sequence, then I thought, well, this must be my way in. Except at first, my iPhone footage looked like... Well, it was terrible. But the beauty of starting on iPhone was that it was my own low-risk way of learning the basics of camera movement and composition, all without making an investment that would have resulted in a $3,000 paperweight on the off chance I didn't take to this filmmaking thing. So for me, the low cost equaled low risk. And having my camera in my pocket further gave me the freedom to film whenever I felt inspired by a situation or location. So it's possible for a director like Soderbergh who by all accounts is more than done with the studio system to be drawn to the freedom that the iPhone offers. Of the iPhone, he said in interviews, I look at this as potentially one of the most liberating experiences that I've ever had as a filmmaker, and that I continue having. And you know he's not wrong. Tangerine was able to pull off some very incredible intimate shots because of how small and mobile the iPhone is. And the iPhone now has the ability to capture high quality 4K footage, so projecting an image onto a movie theater screen no longer means a drop in quality. Stating, I think this is the future, there have been rumors floating around that Soderbergh will only work with iPhone from here on out. So from indie films to larger budget productions, the iPhone is only gaining more and more prominence. So much so that it seems we've entered an entirely new revolution for filmmakers. I know the quality was never meant to stack up to a $30,000 camera, but if you're like me, and you're looking for a way to test the waters on this film thing, here's my advice. Go outside, reach into your pocket, point, shoot, and learn. With the technology of today, there's no more excuses when it comes to getting started.